Hi, welcome to designing cross-platform landing page using Flutter for web and native. In last uh, article and its respective YouTube video, we discussed about how to make the landing page for uh, web and native. We had made this page for desktop uh, screen size. In this video, we will be making it more responsive. What responsive means is, if we change the size of the page, that should uh, not give any issues, the UI issues. Like you are seeing here in the right flow overflow uh, issue, or like pixel overflow. And for the native, you might see, uh, this is on the Android phone, uh, Android emulator, where you can see at the top right corner and the uh, bottom where the pixels are getting overflowed. So in this video, uh, we will be following this article of mine that I wrote about how to make it more responsive. So this is our starting uh, right now in here and we'll make it how we can make it look like this. So you can see there is at the top right corner we have some uh, links right here which may not fit in a smaller screen uh, form factor. So we would replace with it a little icon clicking on which will give you a more option to take action at. For the native uh, screen uh, and phone, uh, uh, smaller screen like phone where you see like this. So here it's also visible in the subscribe where we had a subscribe button and it's bad getting overflowed because this one was too huge to, for it to fit in a smaller screen. So you can see this is the overflow we are getting. So we'll replace it with a custom different design that's specifically made it for the smaller screen. So in here, sometimes it could be making a design change. Like we may not want to uh, put the subscribe text here. We may want to just put an icon which makes more sense because we cannot fit two things together. The another design choice could be we put it a design um, of the button. We can have a text up there and the image down there or can make it more creative. It's totally up to you what you want to do. So and let's get started with how we can go one by one to make this happen. So in here, I will show you how to make it adaptive, basically how we will adapt to the given screen size. And uh, you, it's uh, again the picture for the web that shows you exactly where the pixels are being overflown. And here is the native. And giving a quick overview of the code structure, it's right here, so you see we have the branches, all the web branches. So web branches is where we left off in the last video. And the web uh, hyphen uh, responsive is the where the full code is there, like after applying the response, uh, making it response change, uh, make it responsive. So uh, in you see I have two tabs here. In one tab my servers is running, and in this tab, in terminal tab, I can play around with my different uh, code branches. So uh, this is where, so I'm running my old code right now, which is here. And, as, and I will be using the inspect of Chrome to see how it fits. You see, it's like the overflow error occurred. And if I change it to like say iPhone 5, you can see it's more. And if it's a iPad, you can see this subscribe button overflow and Galaxy S5 is too small so you have to scroll it and you see there's like a whole bunch of error overflow and pixel overflow happen. All right so going back to code so I will go back to my existing um, where I have uh, completed the code. I will check out that code and I will show you one by one how I achieved this. So if you just check out the uh, different branches in the server, it will automatically rebuild. So you don't have to do anything pretty much here and it will automatically refresh. It will take a while, but it will get there. 
there you go so you see in responsive s5 we were just seeing the overflow error and now there's no more and you can see ipad this is adapted to there's a difference for smaller screen so let's see how we really made it happen so in this post uh, i will be describing three things first thing implementing a stateless widget which is i'm calling responsive widget to support dynamic screen size you can also say this is my utility class that will be helping me with the rendering the uh, different screen uh, form factors to identify which screen I am at. And the second other uh, the second other section of this post will be adapting the page bodies to a large versus uh, versus smaller screen. What that means is this is a large, so this is a body. You can see all these three components with this text image and this email address uh, input is a body part and the top part the navigation part is the top part so first we will uh, uh, make a body part responsive that's what that means and the third uh, the last part of this post is how we'll make the len header page to show Mac menu icon at a smaller screen like when the screen changes smaller how this becomes to the uh, icon in this post we will not be dealing with how to take action like if it will not do anything clicking on this menu in this post will that will be a um, topic of the next article probably all right so let's dive into the response widget utility utility class so I'm using a class called Layout Builder. If you click on it, there's a link to it. This is a Layout Builder class, which is a actually it will say widget tree that can actually depend on the parent's widget uh, size. What does it mean is, it's like a holder, uh, umbrella holder, and if you put any element uh, widgets inside, it will adapt to its parent size. So it will make it responsive so uh, i will go over that more like how we are gonna use it in this responsive widget and there's another part of these classes i will be using the utility methods uh, to detect what size of my screen is so if it's a large screen or a smaller screen or a medium screen so anything which is more than 1200 pixels is goes into a bucket called large screen and I will be showing a layout which will actually adapt for better fit for a large screen anything less than 800 pixels goes in a small screen and anything between in the in, in between goes in the medium screen so in this particular uh, post to keep it simple I will be creating to uh, uh, taking care of only two form factors large and uh, small and anything which um, it doesn't fit in here will automatically will go to the large uh, screen form factor let's see uh, how we do it so in here um, I was mentioning the layout builder so this is the layout builder is what it does is anything is uh, for more than 1200 pixels it becomes it picks the large screen so what these things means large screen medium screen small screen so these are the three different widget styles that we will design later to uh, be picked when the screen size is met at runtime so when it's 1200 pixels the component which we passed as a large screen will be picked and a medium will be picked when it falls in the medium bucket and if medium screen widget is not available it will fall back to the large screen and the same thing with the small screen uh, our small screen widget will be passed here if it's not found it will default to large screen so let uh, this is what happens here so let's see what uh, uh, how to adapt the bodies page so this code is exactly what it was there before that's how we did in the last time so what it does is we have a body this is a build and here we have a big size box 600 pixels and we have a stack and we add the background and the welcome text what it mean is background is the one this so I'll go back to the bigger one this is a big image 
and we will add the welcome text. That's what body consists of. Within the text in here, this widget, we add this one internally, as you might have seen in the last time. Uh, so this has two components that I divided into. And now I will be replacing it with the two components. I will be using my responsive widget here and I will be putting it into a large screen and a small screen. As you see, the large screen as and small screen, for large screen is the same, there is no change. But for small screen, we have a couple of things going on here. So we'll stack it on top of each other. So what does it mean? In here, it cannot really fit everything in the uh, small screen together, as you can see. So somewhere it has to go. So the better way to do it is in put it into the vertical one, one single child uh, scroll view. That's where it is. And put things on top of each other. So uh, we have a padding and have a column here. If we put in one column, first put the text and the image and this little text here and then the email box here. So you can see there is a little uh, space here that we achieve using the sized box, which is right here. So this is where the size box is to give in the between little gap between. All right, so this is where, so that's where we get this in here. It's up to here. And in the email box, um, so how we achieve the email box here. So in email box, this what this thing is it's a uh, this distance so you see this is like uh, if we go to the this one is too far which is like 74 here and if we reduce the size it will actually overflow to make it not to overflow we have to give the padding same as like here to keep it centered that's what we are doing right here which is giving we are just checking if it's responsive then give the padding same as left otherwise give it 74 to pick it for the larger screen and so that's pretty much we are doing in here and the to add the subscribe button we are doing three things here uh, for the to make it subscribe button adaptive to the screen at the runtime. What does it mean is we are uh, adapting the font size. So if it's small screen, then it goes 12. And if it's medium screen, 12 and 16 and so on. And another second thing we are doing, we are making the size box smaller, like the spacing between them smaller. And the last thing we are doing, we are uh, uh, adapting the size of the image of this email thing right here. So that's what we are doing here. And the last thing but not least, we are uh, making sure like what kind of build button we want to show, whether it's wanna show large button or small button, uh, large and small. In the small button, we will be showing only the um, email icon and in the large button, we'll show text plus icon. And I'm using here the as I said before, we are using the inspect here uh, to see the screen from factors right here. So that's pretty much in here uh, uh, for the thing. And you can see the code is very similar here. It's right here. So I will show you code in my uh, the continuation video. So to please check out my next part uh, for uh, getting uh, diving, uh, diving deep in the code. So see you in the next video. Thank you.